ashamed to stand for Jesus. He took a stand for me. All is lost purity. All I would want is Jesus. He sees all I ever need. I don't need a big fine car. Or a mountain on a hill. All the money in this world of all around the choir. He came by the way I've been. He gave me beauty for ashes. He gave me laughter for tears. What a friend I found in Jesus. He's always there in me. Jesus, he's all I ever need. All I really want is Jesus. He's by the plan of me. I don't need the wealth of this world or his false security. All I really want is Jesus. He's he walks with me on the mountain top. Yes, you do, Lord. He's still there in the valley low. Yeah. Feels my cup is running over. The Lord, he satisfies my soul. When I lay this body down, I'll get my land up here. Oh, I know you'll be there with me. Take my soul out of here. All I really want is Jesus. You see, He's all I live in me. All I really want is Jesus. He's the fire that burns in me. I don't need the will to this world. Or it's false security. All I really want is Jesus. You say he's all I ever need. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. I'm going to praise His name Each day is just the same Come on and praise Him Look what the Lord has done Look what the Lord has done Look what the Lord has done He healed my body He touched my mind Save me just in time. I'm gonna praise His name. Each day is just the same. I'm gonna praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. He's done so much for me. Can I tell it all? I can I tell it all? I can I tell it all? He's done so much for me. Can I tell it all? Jesus has done so much for me. Well, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise His name. Each day is just the same. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what He stole from me. I took back what He stole from me. I took back what He stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp And I took back what he stole from me He's 
under my feet, it's under my feet, it's under my feet, it's under my feet, Satan is under my feet. Well, look what the Lord has done. Yeah. Look what the Lord has done. Come on now. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. Just in time, I'm going to praise His name. Each day is just the same. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. He ain't never done me nothing. Done me nothing good. He ain't never. Me nothing, me nothing but you. Well, somebody by the Holy Ghost, I can't explain it. Somebody by the Holy Ghost, I can't explain it, but I've got it. Oh, I got it. When I stop, I look around and see the good thing that he's done for me I know that I'm unworthy of them all all the blessings he freely gives I owe my whole life to him I've got so much to thank him for and I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for. Well, you see, Lord, You've been so good to me. When I think of what He's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much. To thank Him for. Now sometimes, while on my way I stop, I just kneel and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, you've been so good to me. And when I reach to heaven's shore, please, let me kneel once more I've got so much to thank him for and I've got so much to thank him for so much to praise him for yes, hallelujah been so good yes you have Lord hallelujah when I think so much to thank him for and I've got so much to thank him for so much to praise him for well you see Lord you've been so good to me when I think of what he's done so much to thank him for when I think, when I think of what he's done and where he's brought me from I've got so much to thank him All my days. 
I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my hand And I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God your voice oh hallelujah you have led me through the fire yeah. in the darkest night Absolutely. you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have lived <laughs> in the goodness yes, of god the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. It's running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And all my life you have been faithful. Oh, hallelujah. And all my life you have been so, so good. Of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm gonna say, I stand. Oh, my life, you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my life, you have been so, so. up this morning feeling fine I woke up with heaven on my mind I woke up with joy in my soul cause I knew my Lord was in control well I knew I was walking in the light cause I'd been on my knees in the night and I prayed till the Lord gave a sign well, I'm feeling mighty fine, and I've got heaven on my mind. Oh, don't you know I want to go where the milk and honey flows? There's a light 
and help. But praise the Lord for all He's done. For all He's done. I'm gonna lift my hands and praise Him for all He's done. I try to live my life to please Him, even though I don't deserve to live. My life has just begun. I can't help. I can't help. I can't help. Oh, I can't help. But praise the Lord for all He's done. Hallelujah. I can't help but praise the Lord for all He's done, Brother Wayman. Oh, he's been so good. He's just a good, good God. Amen. I've asked Brother Anthony if he'd bring the word this morning. And uh, while he's coming, during that revival, my mom called me, or I called her and was talking with her. And uh, 2014, she'd had a centralized brain stroke. And the effects of that is supposed to be that uh, you just a vegetable. There's no recovery I mean it's just there's no uh, nothing in your uh, hands moves you don't know, speech no anything just laying there as a vegetable God healed her and then go ahead and then she had a little over three years ago another stroke as many of you are aware of and been praying for and I want to give you a report of the prayers of people that's been praying for my mom. And then she said, son, this was during the revival. She said, this weekend something happened to me. I said, what? Now, she recovered quite a bit. She's up uh, in the uh, uh, mid to upper 80s to low 90s as far as recovery. But she said, for three years, a little over three years, I've not been able to get up out of my chair. On my own. I've had to have some type of assistance. I've either had to hold on to something to stand up or somebody had to help me. She said this weekend, that was about three weekends, three weekends ago. About three weekends ago, she said, I was able to stand up out of my chair with my legs holding on to nothing. Nobody helping me and pulling up on nothing. I said that to say this. For you that has been pushing and pushing for a move of God in your life, for a healing, a deliverance, or whatever it may be, keep on, keep it on. We'll keep it put one step in front of the other. It may not, healing is a process that takes a period of time. Miracles are instant. I'm a miracle addict. But if it's only by healing, and it's teaspoons at a time. I'll receive the teaspoons at a time this morning. Oh, I want to encourage somebody this morning. I want to tell somebody, just keep on pressing in and pressing on. There's a lot of questions that I can't answer you this morning, but he has the answer. I thank God for Brother Ronnie over here. Many of you know about his uh, what happened with him a few years ago, a couple of years ago. Uh, was it last year? Last year, and look, he's in the midst with you this morning. Amen. When people thought that he would never recover, he's a God that causes recovery. Amen. He's a God that will help you recover. It don't matter if you was lost and backslid. He's a God that will help you recover. It don't matter if you've been sick. He's a God that will help you recover. I don't know about somebody, but I believe it's time to go to church. Somebody give the Lord a big hand clap of praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All across our country and our state and even our city and county today, people are going to church to worship a dead God. But my God's not dead. He's still alive. Somebody give him a big hand clap of praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me this morning? Would you stand with me and turn in your Bible to the book of Isaiah chapter 53? 
Isaiah chapter 53. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Isaiah 53, we'll take our text from beginning in verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Let's go on. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus this morning asking for the, your anointing, O oh God, to move in a mighty way. Lord, let your spirit saturate and flood throughout this place. Lord, that if there be one lost, that they leave this house saved. Lord, that if there be one sick and afflicted, they leave this house healed. Lord, that if there be one discouraged, that they leave encouraged. Lord, that the bound would leave freed. O oh God, have your will and have your way this morning, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Go ahead. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. With the fall season heavy upon us, many are getting ready to celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday in this upcoming week. Tables will be adorned with turkeys and hams and dressing and cranberry sauce and mashed potatoes, breads and pies and cakes. Family members will travel from far and near to spend a few hours at grandma's or at mom and dad's house to share a meal with the family once again. Stories will be told, old times will be reminisced. Tears will be shed for those missing faces in empty chairs. It'll be a day when most of the nation will take time to say thank you. Thank you to Grandma who got up long before sunrise to cook a meal. Thank you to Mom and Dad who work hard hours to put food on the table and keep the house warm. Thank you to doctors and nurses who have undergone the severest of stress to keep up with the world's ever-changing issues. Thank you to teachers. Thank you to first responders. Thank you to farmers and agricultural workers. Thank you to all who work diligently to keep the world fed and healthy. And yet in so many of these families... The one who created all things and provided all things will be forgotten. Or maybe we'll mention God and offer up a fake prayer a year after the last time we prayed. Maybe we'll say, thank God the football game's about to start. Or thank God the food's done. I'm starving. Or some other insincere, irreverent remark that just so happens to include the words, thank God. Isn't it strange how society tells us to be kind to everyone, to always say please and thank you, to always be respectful, and yet society is so quick to disregard the very one from whom we draw our every breath. Isn't it strange how we throw around the word thanksgiving and yet we're some of the most unthankful people in the world? The very nation that once stood for Christ and created an entire holiday season to offer our thanks to the Lord. 
Could it be that we've become like those spoken of by the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. And the list goes on. Among this list of evildoers, this long list of wicked men, we find a word that we don't often associate with sinfulness. Unthankful. Unthankful. We read in Isaiah the foretelling of Christ's suffering. He would come to this earth and endure the pain of flesh and bone all for a people as unthankful as we are. He would endure the affliction of the cross all for an unthankful and ungrateful people. But I'm glad that he was willing to do it. I'm glad that he looked out through time and said, Yes, Father, I'll die for them. And even though he died for a world that so often fails to say thank you, his reply was, You're welcome anyway. That's a subject I'd like to look at this morning. If you want to put a title on this message, You're welcome anyway. You're welcome anyway. Luke 6.35, Jesus said, But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. The Lord our God came to this world and took on the form of man to be mocked to be falsely accused, to be tied to a whipping post and beaten beyond recognition, to have the hair jerked from his beard, to be spit on and humiliated, to be nailed to an old Roman tree. And he did it all for me. He did it all for you. He did it for the ungodly. He did it for the murderer. He did it for the rapist. He did it for the pedophile. He did it for the addict. He did it for the religious. He did it for the proud. He did it for the unthankful. And when the world received him not, he simply said, you're welcome anyway. You're welcome anyway. I'll tell you where this message came from. Just the other day, Brother Donnie asked me to bring him a sack of corn down to his house. And so I had to do some other errands in town. And I got a sack of corn and went down and dropped it off. And his little grandson is there. Ridge, he's two, yes, two years old. And as I was about to leave, Brother Donnie said, Ridge, tell, tell Brother Anthony, thank you for the corn. And Ridge wouldn't say anything. And so just being silly, I said, well, you're welcome anyway. And the Holy Ghost got a hold of me and said, how do you think I feel when my children don't thank me? Listen to me now. Listen to me now, the very God that stepped out on nothing and created everything and sent His Son to die that we might be saved, that we might be healed, that we might be delivered, and yet we don't take time to thank Him. But all He says in return is, You're welcome anyway. You're welcome anyway. You're welcome anyway. Have you ever done something for somebody, but they didn't bother to smile at you in return? There was no gratitude. There was no appreciation. There was no thank you. And maybe after they got out of earshot, you said somewhat sarcastically, well, you're welcome. Right? You hold the door open for somebody or you, you let somebody else go ahead of you or you give something to somebody they can't reach and they just go on about their business and don't say thank you. Well, you're welcome. But of course, you wait till they're out of earshot. It hurts when we give and give and give of ourselves, and it seems that no one takes notice. It hurts when we pour ourselves into others, but all they ask for in return is more of what you've got to give. It hurts when we live our lives to help somebody, but they don't even take the time to say thank you. John 1, 10 and 11 said, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. Imagine what our Lord must have felt when He came to a world to give His life for it, and yet we didn't even know who He was. Imagine how He must have felt when He shed His blood for the very soldiers that nailed Him to the cross and drove a spear through His side. Imagine the love of God for him to look down from the cross and cry out, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. You're welcome anyway. You're, wel 
Do you understand what I'm saying? You're welcome anyway. When they put him up on the cross after they had beat the tar out of him and pulled the beard out of his face and mashed a crown of thorns into his head and put him through the awfulest torment that you and I can imagine as he hung there on the cross breathing his final breaths of life, what did he say to those that had done him wrong? Forgive them, Lord. You're welcome anyway. You don't know what I'm here doing. You don't understand why I'm dying. You don't understand that the very blood that you're jerking out of my body is the blood that's going to set your children free. You don't even say thank you, but you're welcome anyway. Romans 1.21, Paul said, Because when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. If we rewind all the way to the beginning, we find that sin entered the world in the very first few pages of the Bible. And it brought with it sickness, Disease, wickedness, iniquity, all things contrary to the nature and being of God Almighty. And with sin there came a demand for righteousness. And righteousness demanded a sacrifice. Blood had to be shed. An innocent life had to be taken. How many lambs had to die? How many goats and bullocks? How much blood had to be shed in order to just roll the sins of the people back for another year? Until the perfect lamb showed up. Until the spotless lamb of God came on the scene. John the Baptist said, Behold the lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. He didn't just roll their sins back. He didn't just push them off. But he took them away. After hundreds, after hundreds of years of sacrifice, the answer had come. There would be no more sacrifice for sin because the ultimate sacrifice had come to give his life freely. The answer for sin had come. The answer for sickness had come. The answer for disease had come. The answer for depression and oppression and possession had come. The answer for all the world's problems had come. And yet we didn't want him. But he did it anyway. We didn't want him. We didn't want the sacrifice. We didn't want to be set free from sin because it's so much easier to just wallow in self-pity. We didn't want all that he had. And we turned him away, but he did it anyway. He died because he knew that's what we needed. He knew what we had to have and he loved us enough to give it to us. And he said, you're welcome anyway. When he deserved a robe of righteousness and jewels of splendor, he was rewarded with a crown of thorns in a parted garment. When he should have been hailed as the Most High King, the Lord and Savior of mankind, he was laughed to scorn. Here's the King of the Jews. Let him save himself if he is who he says he is. When the whole earth should have bowed and said, Thank you, they killed him. They put him to an open shame. Nevertheless, he went through it all because he knew that's what we required for redemption. And he said, you're welcome anyway. Sister Kelby sang it. If I can mention only one, I'd have to thank God for his son. And that's enough to praise the Lord for all he's done. That's enough to praise the Lord for all he's done. All is done. All is done. Preacher, I don't have anything to praise God for this morning. He ain't answered my prayer yet. He's not brought me out of this wilderness yet. He's not got grandma out of the hospital yet. He's not healed my cancer yet. He's not done this yet. But honey, he give his life freely on the cross of Calvary that you might be redeemed, that you might be set free, that you might be healed, that you might be delivered. And that's enough to praise God for. Hallelujah! Thanksgiving's coming up in just a few short days and families will sit around their tables and hold hands and we'll say thank you Jesus for this food. 
Thank you, God, for another year. Thank you that you ain't knocked old grandpa in the head yet. Thank you for all this that you've done and all that you've given to us. Amen. And then in approximately 365 days, we'll pray another prayer about like that again, but we don't pray any time in between. We don't say thank you, Lord, any time in between. We don't say praise God any time in between. It's all irreverent. It's all fake. It's all a pretense. It's all a front. But it's time that the church of the Most High God realize what He has given us through the shed blood of His Son and realize that it's time to say thank you, Lord. It's time to praise the Lord again, church. In Joshua chapter 4, verses 5 through 7, And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan. And take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come saying, What mean ye by these stones? What do these rocks mean? Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. When Joshua and Israel came to Jordan, he commanded for the stones to be brought forth from the river so that all the future generations would know how God opened up the river before them. He said it shall be for a memorial. When they looked upon these stones, they would be reminded of the time that God did the impossible. Just maybe a little Hebrew boy or girl would say, Daddy, what's that pile of rocks for? And Daddy would say, well, baby, that's from the time that our God opened the Jordan River for us to cross over. And maybe he'd go on and say, and I remember also the time he brought us up out of Egypt. And I remember when he opened a Red Sea, kind of like that in the same way. And I remember how he gave us manna to eat in the desert and how he brought water out of a big old rock. And and for all the years in the wilderness, he did all these things for us while we were wandering around. Our clothes never wore out and our shoes never wore out and we never went hungry and we never got thirsty and God provided all we had need of and he brought us into the promised land these stones would be for a memorial these stones would be to remind them what the Lord did for them these stones would be a sign of thanksgiving so that every time they passed by and their children would say what is that for they would say well that's just the time that God worked things out for us that's just the time that God opened up a river and it's kind of like the time he opened up a sea and it's kind of like the time he provided in the wilderness and it's kind of like the time that he did this and he did that and he did this and he did that it was to remind them To remind them. To remind them that it was the Lord that brought them out and made a way. And you and I can thank Him just the same. Because I remember when I didn't know the meaning of salvation. When I was in Egypt, but He reached down and saved my soul from a devil's hell. I remember when I could have left this world in a backslid state, but it kept me from hell once again. I remember when I was sick and He healed my body. I remember when He filled me with the Holy Ghost. I remember when He put money in my pocket. I remember when He made a way when there was no way. Let us lift up our voices in thanksgiving to the Lord our God. Let us make His praises known. Let us show our gratitude to the One who paid the ultimate price for our redemption, our healing, and our salvation. 1 Timothy 2 and 8, Paul said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Colossians 3.15 said, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Psalm 147 and 7 said, Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Psalm 96 1 said, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Psalm 108 1 said, Oh God, 
my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Oh God, my heart is fixed. Is your heart fixed this morning? Is your heart fixed this morning? Have you come with your mind on Jesus? Have you come with your heart on Jesus? Have you come with heaven on your mind this morning? Have you come to offer up a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord your God? Romans 12, 1, the Apostle Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable service. Living sacrifice. Reasonable service. We read in the law about Thanksgiving sacrifice. Not made for sin, not made for atonement, not made to roll sins away, but simply to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for provision. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for making a way when there was no way. But now we, living in the New Testament under the New Covenant, are no longer made righteous by a blood sacrifice of an animal. Neither can we offer our thanksgiving through the killing of a lamb or an offering of cakes and meal, but we offer our thanks unto God by surrendering our lives to Him and Him alone. We show Him our gratitude by partaking in that which He provided for us. You understand? We say thank you by living according to what the Lord has done for us. We show Him our gratitude by living according to that which He did upon the cross of Calvary. You say, I don't understand that. Have you ever cooked a big meal for somebody and then they didn't show up to eat? You ever worked long hours in the kitchen, made all the fixings, had a big pot roast or a big ham cooked and you went through hours of cooking in preparation. You cleaned the house from one end to another all for those special guests that you had invited to attend. But they didn't show up. Boy, that made you mad, didn't it? Hurt your feelings, didn't it? Made you kind of frustrated with them, didn't it? Because what you had labored to prepare, what you had labored to set forth before them, it seemed to you that they didn't appreciate it enough to even come. They didn't appreciate what you had done enough to even come and sit at your table and eat a meal that you had made for them. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> One Christmas Eve, I told everybody to come over to my house. This morning I'm going to cook. I got up early that morning and had biscuits and gravy and bacon and eggs and sausage and coffee and everything that goes with it already. And the only person that showed up was my wife. Hurt my feelings. Kind of hurt me to know that I'd gone through all the preparation to pre prepare this meal for all those that I'd invited but they didn't show up. The Lord our God sent His only begotten Son to die on the cross of Calvary that you and I might be made free from the bondage of sin. That we might be healed of our diseases. That we might be set free from all things that would hold us and hinder us. And we are the most ungrateful and unthankful people when we do not partake of it. But he said, you're welcome anyway. It's provided if you'll partake of it. It's been done. There's nothing left to do. There's nothing left in order to be done for you to be saved, for you to be set free, for you to be healed. All you've got to do is partake in that which God has made available to you through his Son. How much must our Lord feel unappreciated when people turn Him away? 
How unappreciated must he have felt when he came to die for a world that didn't receive him. When people laugh at the mention of the cross. When people mock a bloody religion that you Christians have got. When people run and hide at the mention of the Holy Ghost. When people shun the very idea of divine healing. When we don't partake in that which has been made available to us, how unthankful we are for doing so. But Jesus says you're welcome anyway. It's been provided. It's been taken care of. It's there for you if you'll reach out and take God at His Word. May we live each day as a day of thanksgiving. Not with turkeys and pies and breads and cakes, but with an humble heart and a grateful spirit. Let us lay aside our own wills and our own thoughts and let us be the living sacrifice that our Lord deserves and demands. Let us learn to say thank you. People get bum-fuzzled at the idea of going to church more than just once a week. Or if you take part in week-long revivals, well, you ought to slow down. Y'all, 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 y'all are doing too much. Yes, I know that there's a time that y'all to slow down, but don't you be telling me I need to slow down when you don't even go to the house of God but twice a month. Oh, my Lord, if we were who we said we were, if we just had the desire within us that David had when he said, the zeal of thy house hath eaten me up. Oh, my Lord, if we would just be thankful enough to have a desire to be in the house of God every time the door was open. There was a time when you'd go to the house of God and I wasn't even alive for this time, but I've heard about it and I long for it. When you'd get there early and you'd hear the old saints of God walking from miles around singing praises to the Lamb of God as they was on their way to the house of God. But now you can't even get people to stand up for 10 minutes of congregational worship. We want to come and have our little party for an hour and a half and go home and we're just as unfed as we were when we walked through the door. We want to come and do things our way. We want to do it the way we want it to be. We want it to be just exactly like it is in the order of service. And we don't leave any time for the Lord to move. My Lord, how ungrateful and how unthankful we are when God wants to move among His people, but we're not grateful enough to let Him. It's there. It's there. It's there if you want it. If you're lost and undone this morning or backslid on God, it's there. He's here for you this morning to save your soul, to redeem you back into the flock. He's here this morning for you if you need healing in your body. He's here this morning for you if you need redemption, if you need deliverance of any kind. He's here to do it. It's not through Anthony Sullivan. It's not through Donnie Lawson. It's not through Josh Burgess. It's not through Paul Daniel. It's not through Not Ashamed. It's not through Frostbite House of Prayer, but it's through Jesus Christ and Him alone. Give Him a big hand clap of praise. You're welcome anyway. What a God. What love. What love. You're welcome anyway. This morning, if whatever your need may be, as you stand, if you're able to stand. You've heard it said many times if you've been in a church atmosphere much at all that when Jesus stretched out his arms on that cross he was saying world I love you this much or you can turn that right around and say he was saying you're welcome anyway 
beaten, despised, rejected, bruised. But I love you this much. Oh, what love the Father hath bestowed upon you and I. Oh, how many times we will turn a deaf ear and walk away when He's speaking to us, wooing us, wanting to love on us. And as we go out away from Him, He still says, I love you. I love you. The Apostle Paul teaches us of how depth that love is, how much it is. It's just, it don't matter what we've done, where we've been, where we've gone. He's going to love us anyway. We can go into the very pits of hell and spend eternity in hell in the lake of fire. But yet, that won't change His love for you and I. If He loved me that much, why would He let me go there? He's not. He's gave you a choice. He said, I lay before you life and death. Are we thankful enough to surrender it all to Him? As they sing, come on, come on. Whatever your need is. Brother Donnie, if I come up front for prayer, somebody's going to think I've sinned. So, they're going to think anyway whether you do or not. So why not just forget about them and get what you need from the Lord this morning? If you just need His strength, come on, get strength. If you need prayer for a sickness, a disease, come on, get prayer. If you just need forgiveness, come on and get forgiveness. If you just want a closer walk and a little more Jesus, come on.